Hi guys, it's Xenia. Welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys my top 15 perfumes that I have lined up for springtime. But keep in mind, I do have a huge perfume collection, so obviously I use my other perfumes as well pretty much all year round, but I had to kind of like restrict myself. Otherwise this would have been like a top 40. I did make a top spring perfumes video last year. So obviously I'm not going to include those perfumes for the sake of not being repetitive, but obviously those are some really good picks for the springtime as well. So if you want to check that video out, I will link it up here. Before we get into this video, please make sure that you are subscribed to my channel and turn your post notifications on. And let's get straight into my top 15 spring perfumes for 2022. So I'm going to start off with a new perfume in my collection. This is the Narciso. I think this is just called Narciso by Narciso Rodriguez. This perfume I thought would be such a good pick for the springtime because this smells so clean but so complex. I've never found a very clean fragrance like clean musky kind of almost soapy scent to smell very complex and high-end and this definitely does it and i definitely think the notes obviously have a lot to do with that this has top notes of gardenia and white rose middle notes of musk and base notes of cedar white cedar extracts and vetiver i think where this perfume really stands out for me is probably at the base because i love any base of woody notes now one of my Probably least favorite notes in perfumes is Gardenia. I find it to be a very heavy floral. And if you are new to my channel, I am not super huge into florals, although I feel like I am getting into them lately. I prefer florals that are more modern florals. I'm not a really big fan of florals that smell very outdated and vintage-like. I like florals that are more like fresh florals or even better, sweet florals. There's really nothing sweet about this. This is a very clean, musky scent with like a woody dry down, a little bit of florals that kind of give it like that really pretty feminine, almost sexy kind of opening. But I would say those florals kind of die down once you hit the uh, base notes of all of that uh, cedar. So it gets very woody. I can always smell the musk in here. I think musk is Narcisa Rodriguez's like signature note that they basically have in all of their fragrances. I was kind of skeptical before smelling this. I had to smell a tester. I did not just like blind buy this because I've had a pretty bad experience with a past Narciso scent, which was the Narcisa Rodriguez for her scent. And that's exactly what I was talking about when I said that I, I don't like vintage outdated type of florals that's what i found that scent to be it was like a very very heavy rose that just did not resonate with me at all i feel like i'm very sensitive to musk scents and this is a musk scent that i can definitely get on with because it smells so clean but equally there's a sexy vibe in here i can't really pinpoint what i'm smelling but i love it my husband loves it every single time that i wear it and this is a beautiful clean floral scent for the springtime that even if you don't love florals i highly recommend maybe not blind buying this but go and test it out in stores and see what you think i think this is a beautiful elevated classy type of scent like this is a scent you wear with like a classy outfit some nice pumps like very very classy so that is narciso by narciso rodriguez so the next scent that i have in this lineup is aura by mugler and this is the edt that's very important because i don't know what the edp smells like but i have heard Mixed reviews, mostly on the bad side for the EDP because it's a very unique scent, just like all the scents from this house are. I'm sure I would appreciate it if I smelled it, but I have never smelled it. I blind bought this at, I believe, TJ Maxx for like $40, and I love this scent. I think this is a beautiful, fruity, green-like scent. It's so unique and strange. And the bottle, this bottle just wins for like most beautiful bottle ever this in comparison to the original is a lot lighter and not as screechy and loud as the original obviously as most eau de toilettes are but from all the reviews that i was reading this seemed to be the preferred version and if you actually compare the notes between the two you will see that this one has just lighter 
fruitier and prettier fragrances overall. So this has top notes of pear, hibiscus seed, bergamot, and lemon, middle notes of green notes, rhubarb, jasmine, and strawberry, and base notes of Tahitian vanilla, orris, musk, and ambrette. In comparison with the original, the original just has like a really, really strong rhubarb scent to it. There's a lot more florals in it and a lot greener notes in that one. Whereas this one is kind of more balanced because you get pear in it, you get that strawberry, which gives it more of an upbeat, fruity, juicy type of quality. And although this is pretty green, it's also equally very fruity and fresh. This smells so juicy. Every time I spray this out, I my mouth waters because it just smells so like realistic and fruity, but also so like almost like grass-like like if you were mowing the lawn you know like that really earthy grassy scent it's a very unique scent you're definitely going to stand out with this scent but honestly i personally find this not that polarizing like i feel like this is pretty crowd pleasing i don't think that this is that like strange it's unique but i think it could be loved by a lot of people there's a lot of sweetness in that if you don't like super 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 fresh scents or super floral scents there's something they said about the fact that that one basically has like everything in it not only do you get the sweetness from the fruits but you do get a hint of vanilla in here which also gives it more of like a creamy sort of scent so that is aura by mugler the eau de toilette version okay, next up i'm going to show you guys my all-time favorite perfume of life if you watch my videos honestly just skip over this but i'm going to try to keep this short and sweet if you want to know more info about this check out literally every other one of my videos because i talk about it in every single one i'm sure you can guess stella mccartney pop I will never not speak about this scent. Oh my god. This perfume, I mean, I wear this all year round. I don't care the season. I just think it goes with everything. But this was made for like spring and summertime. I think that's where this really, really shines. This is my husband's probably all-time favorite perfume on me. You will definitely see that if you watch my husband rates my perfumes video. This has really strange, unique notes in it. But the notes, although they are pretty unique, it just creates such a unique but also very crowd-pleasing scent in a good way. This is not basic. I would not consider this basic in my book whatsoever. This has top notes of tomato leaf, green mandarin, and violet leaf. Middle notes of tuberose, frangipani, violet, and base notes of musk, sandalwood, and cedar. I would say the strangest thing in this perfume is that tomato leaf, but trust me and believe me when I say I absolutely despise the scent of tomatoes. But that tomato leaf in here, I can smell it. Very sweet though. Like, if you didn't know that there was tomato leaf in here, you would not ever be able to say like, oh, I smell tomato leaf in here. But the fact that I know makes me realize that that's what I'm smelling whenever I smell this. I think that's why this scent is so nostalgic for me because like I've said before, in my childhood, my grandma had a bunch of these like tomato plants and we would always pick out the tomatoes when they were ready. I literally have like such a strong scent memory of the scent of like the tomato leaves and the plant in general. This has been kind of known to smell like Barbie dolls. It smells like the color pink it's so freaking beautiful it's so feminine i find this sexy i find it beautiful i find it pretty literally any adjective in the world it's that basically enough said about this because i've talked about it so much this is stella mccartney pop the next scent in this lineup is a scent that i have never talked about on my channel but this is the perfect springtime scent this will be featured in an upcoming haul for sure this is coach poppy so I picked up this little one fluid ounce at, I think, Marshall's. I instantly fell in love. It's so fresh. It's floral, but there's sweetness in it, but in a very fresh way. This is a very modern floral. It's not the most mature thing in the world, but it's also not immature. It's like that perfect medium. This has top notes of cucumber, mandarin orange, and freesia, middle notes of sweet notes, water lily, rose, jasmine, and gardenia, and base notes of marshmallow, vanilla, sandalwood, and virginia cedar. When I first was getting this, I checked out the notes and I saw that this had marshmallow in it, which instantly made me want to get it. And to be completely honest, I think the marshmallow, I don't really smell the marshmallow. It's not necessarily giving this like a creamy vibe or a sweeter vibe, but I think it is helping it 
smell sweeter if that makes sense like it's mixing along with that vanilla in the dry down to create like a sweet slash woody type of dry down that mixes with the rest of the notes in here really well and then i can definitely smell that cucumber that's in the opening of this it kind of gives me initially because i really don't like the scent that i'm about to talk about but it gives me vibes to cucumber melon from uh bath and body works which has been around for years only slightly and initially in the first opening of this because it's so fresh like obviously what cucumber smells like mixed with that freesia note obviously this is like uber fresh but then the middle notes really sweeten it out that water lily the rose the jasmine and gardenia give this like a very like watery floral kind of scent like it smells almost like water i don't know how to explain it and it's very refreshing all around like it's a very very refreshing scent it's a beautiful springtime scent so i definitely recommend coach pop and this next scent kind of goes hand in hand with coach poppy because i would basically categorize them in the scent family they're not dupes of one another at all but they're definitely in the same family of that like fruity fresh floral vibe so this is chanel chance eau tendre the eau de parfum this scent is so beautiful like it literally just smells beautiful and effortless this is like a, a white t-shirt and jeans type of smell but you're gonna smell sexy and effortless all at the same time this has top notes of keens and grapefruit middle notes of rose and jasmine and base notes of white musk so it's a pretty simple composition and i would say that all the notes are so well blended in here that nothing really stands out everything just kind of meshes with one another like i can smell the keens and the grapefruit in the opening for sure which gives it like that fruity, upbeat, very juicy vibe, almost like a mouth-watering scent. And then the rose and jasmine also, the same as Coach Poppy, have that like watery floral sort of scent that feels very refreshing. And then the musk in here is another like clean, clean musk type of scent. Like this is fresh out the shower, but in a really, really good way. It's not boring. You are 1,001% going to get a trillion and one compliments the second that you step out. That is Chanel Chan's Eau Tendre the Eau de Parfum. So now let me talk about a scent I have not talked about in a minute on my channel, but I can't believe I just like let this scent go and I haven't given it love because as I was trying to kind of go through my perfume collection to find out the scents for this video, I looked at this and I was like, that is literally spring in a bottle and this is burberry london by burberry oh my god this scent is so so beautiful although this is very spring-like like there's a lot of florals in here but i honestly find this an all-year-round scent this is a beast when it comes to projection longevity sillage i'm talking you will smell this on you for three days straight it is that strong which is why i'm saying I feel like this could go all year round because it's not too sweet, it's not too fresh, it's not too floral. It's just perfect, but this is strong stuff. This is not an overspray type of perfume at all. This has top notes of honeysuckle, tangerine, and orange, middle notes of jasmine, tiara flower, peony, and clementine, and base notes of musk, sandalwood, and patchouli. I used to use this like years ago all the time. And, oh, it just brings back memories. This scent is so weird because I find this to be very classy. But I also feel like you could wear this to a club. I, I don't know. Like, it gives me both vibes, which is strange. It smells so sophisticated. So, so, so ultra feminine and sexy. There's something very, very seductive and feminine about this. This is a musky floral scent with a touch of sweetness and a whole lot of sophistication. It smells like you have money. Like, that's just what it, it gives off. And this is another one of those scents that you will wear and I don't think anybody will not want to compliment you on because there's something about it that does really well with your chemistry and with a lot of different people's chemistry because I've had friends that used to always spray this around me and it would smell so good on each person that would put it on. But this is Burberry London. This next scent is another perfect for springtime scent. It's another scent that I have never mentioned on my channel. And I want you to take this with a grain of salt if you do not like the main note that this has. So this is Kelvin Klein Beauty. 
and beauty is the perfect name for it because that is exactly what this smells like it smells so clean and fresh out the shower like you're going to smell like you took like a 15 hour shower after you put this on but like i said take this with a grain of salt because if you do not like jasmine you are not going to like this this is jasmine overload but this is like it's true, true jasmine. It's not like the jasmine that is in Alien by Mugler because that is a lot stronger of a jasmine. It's a jasmine that is mixed with a lot of other things. It's very complex. This is literally just jasmine. The notes in here are top notes of Embrette, middle notes of jasmine, and base notes of Virginia Cedar. So it's a very simple composition and I think more so than anything, all I get is jasmine in here. There's slightly like a, a woody scent, but this literally smells like you have the jasmine flower in front of you and you're just smelling it so highly recommend if you love jasmine but i highly do not recommend if you don't love jasmine it's a beautiful clean 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 floral scent there's no sweetness in here there's nothing it's just clean and soapy floral goodness coming from somebody that usually doesn't love super floral scents and very soapy scents this is a good one if this is too much though i know that they have like a sheer beauty and i think there's like a beauty essence so definitely look into those ones this is just the original but definitely check out the flankers that is kelvin klein beauty okay. the next scent is a scent that i have again not talked about in a very long time this is a celebrity perfume this is live by jlo so when i first bought this i did not really like it until i actually wore it and the dry down was magical on my skin there's beautiful notes in this perfume and i would equally say that this is a springtime slash summertime scent because this does have like a tropical vibe to it and that is because this has pineapple in it so this has top notes of pineapple sicilian lemon italian orange middle notes of red currant blossom peony violet and base notes of caramel sandalwood tonka bean and vanilla although there is a lot of like sweeter notes in here like caramel the tonka the vanilla the red currant you would think this is very very like sugary sweet i don't really find this sweet there's sweetness in it for sure but i find it more so like a citrusy fruity fresh type of scent there's a lot of freshness to it Almost has like a soapy scent, which is JLo's basically like signature scent. All of her perfumes have like a soapy hint to them. And that's no different with this one. So don't be thrown off by the base notes of like super like caramel and tonka, vanilla. You think this is like sweetness overload. It's really not. It's a really pretty, very easy to wear, effortless, everyday springtime scent. And that pineapple is definitely apparent in here. So if you love the scent of pineapple, then you will definitely, definitely love it. And because of that pineapple, it does give me like a hint of like tropical vacation like scent to it, which is why I said that this is like equally a summer spring scent. But because this is so soapy and floral and clean at the same time is why I wanted to include it for springtime more than for summertime. Also, this is like completely unrelated, but it's about this perfume. I just wanted to mention it in case you are watching the person that commented this to me but somebody told me like a viewer from australia basically said that i needed to try this perfume out because it had gone like viral in australia if you are from australia and you know anything about that let me know in the comments or maybe i'm just like making that up in my head but i'm definitely sure that i read that comment so definitely let me know if you're from australia and you know anything about that so that is live by j so next the end all be all of springtime fragrances i could not do a spring perfume Perfumes video without this perfume. This is Gucci Flora Gorgeous Gardenia. Now I am a gardenia hater as I said in the beginning of this video and although this is called Gorgeous Gardenia, this does not smell like gardenia in the slightest to me. This perfume reminds me a lot, like a lot, a lot, of Juicy Couture Viva La Juicy, which I know sounds strange because Gorgeous Gardenia, you would think this would be so floral and I don't know, just more of like that gucci-esque like more so mature type scent and i'm saying it reminds me of viva la juicy which is the complete opposite of that okay so it is the next day yesterday basically my camera died on me and then i had to be somewhere right after so i had to just stop filming so i'm back today to finish this video out and i believe i was talking about gucci flora gorgeous gardenia which i almost just dropped as i was saying about this perfume this definitely reminds me of the uh viva la juicy scent i would say this one is like even more girly and even more like the color pink. It has like a, a sour element to it. I don't really know how to describe it. 
It kind of has the same sort of sour element that Burberry Brit has like when that first starts out like it, it's very very tart in the beginning so if you're familiar with that scent then you know what i'm talking about but these two don't smell alike i was just trying to like describe that sort of tart element that this has this has top notes of pear blossom middle notes of gardenia and jasmine and base notes of brown sugar and patchouli i think the super sweet aspect of this is definitely coming from the brown sugar which i typically don't always like because tell me why i always associate brown sugar with like the smell of oatmeal and I really really dislike that but this does not give me that the brown sugar in here just gives it like a, a sugary scent kind of just sweetens out all of the florals that are in here and although this is called gorgeous gardenia and you would think the main part of this would be gardenia I think that it's actually that jasmine but it's like a really really sweetened out jasmine to the point where it doesn't even smell floral very strange considering this has flowers all over it it's literally gucci flora gorgeous gardenia like everything about it screams floral yet it doesn't really smell like florals it smells like a sweet girly scent i don't think that this smells super mature i think this could be a scent that you could wear in high school and as far as the patchouli in here I don't really get it. The only con that I would say as far as this fragrance, this doesn't really last. Like this is a scent that you have to reapply pretty much like every three hours or so. And it's not like the strongest scent in the world. So that's why it doesn't really last. But all in all, it is a really pretty scent. And again, perfect springtime scent. So that is Gucci Flora. Gorgeous Gordine. Now let's talk about this perfume. So this is White by Kenneth Cole. This perfume has a special place in my heart because I told you guys in... A previous video I don't even know that was like months ago it must have been at least six months ago when I told you guys that when I discovered this fragrance I wanted this to be my wedding scent and you guys know I did get married but something that I never told you guys is that I actually didn't have a wedding which I'll kind of get into right now if you don't care about this part obviously skip through it but if you are like a viewer of mine because I know I get so many questions like what scent did you wear in your wedding? When was your wedding? Like I always get questions about my wedding. Basically, we had always talked about having a big wedding, but that was not really because we necessarily wanted to have a big wedding, especially me. Uh, my husband did somewhat, but it was more so kind of like his parents really, really wanted us to kind of just get all of the family and he has a really huge family and I have a really huge family. So we were kind of planning that we would have like this huge wedding back in Albania, which we're both from and just kind of like gather up both of our families and have like a freaking 500 people wedding. And it was always kind of like something that we were saying like, oh yeah, we're gonna have a wedding. But as it started getting closer to it, I started getting so much anxiety about it. And I basically just sat down with him and I was like, I do not want to have a giant wedding. I have always wanted like just a little tiny wedding. I'm a very anxious person. I don't like to be around a ton of people, especially a ton of people that I don't know. So basically I was like, you know what? I really just want to do something like super, 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 super small and intimate. If it's even just me and you, I would love that. Or just like with our like immediate families, but I do not want a large wedding so basically that's what ended up happening we did get married like legally at the court <laughs> and for that i did actually wear this perfume so i mean i didn't wear this to my actual wedding but to get married for me i've never really cared about having a giant wedding i value having a good marriage a lot more than having a ginormous wedding if you had a wedding obviously more power to you i think it's beautiful but it was just never something that i like dreamed of like i feel like a lot of women always dream of like getting married walking down the aisle and like yeah i want to put on a pretty dress and all of that but the idea of a wedding just doesn't really like excite me and basically the more we talked about it together we just kind of decided like we'd rather have like a really really nice honeymoon and just a really nice vacation and then basically save up that money to buy a home like it just it just didn't really make sense at all you know it was more so something that we were, I don't want to say pressured because that sounds really bad, but it was more so my husband's uh, family that really wanted us to have a huge wedding. Whereas my family was always telling me like, hey, you could save that money and you guys could buy a really nice house or go on a really nice vacation. And I was always for that idea. Like That's how I was brought up. So I never really cared for a wedding. Whereas he was brought up in a more like traditional way, I guess, which is why they really wanted one. But ultimately we decided we'd rather have a nice vacation 
and save that money. Ultimately, it's just about me and him at the end of the day. So yeah, anyways, that's the deal with that. I hope I cleared that up because I keep on getting comments about what I wore on my wedding and when my wedding was and everything like that. Anyways, back to this perfume. So like I said, I did wear this on my marriage day. I don't want to say wedding day because I didn't have a wedding, but when we got married. And this perfume is so beautiful. This smells like a bride. If you guys are familiar with the scent of Twilight Woods from Bath & Body Works, it kind of gives me that vibe. This perfume smells like how it looks. It's so sleek and it's like in this all white packaging and it just looks so clean. And that's exactly what it smells like. This doesn't really have like top, middle and base notes. It just kind of has all the notes laid out. So this has vanilla, amber, musk, plum, freesia, iris, orchid, lily of the valley and mandarin orange. I would say what I smell out of this the most is probably a combo of vanilla, amber and musk. Like I get a really sweet musk in like the best way possible. It's a tiny bit fresh, but I do consider this a sweeter scent, but a sweeter scent that's not cloying or it's not gonna like choke you out, you know? You're not gonna wanna wear something that heavy on your wedding day. It's also a little bit powdery and it just smells like the ultimate feminine, clean, just beautiful scent. It, it almost has like this cozy vibe to it. Like it just makes me feel so like, cocooned every time that I wear it and I absolutely love it. If you are a bride-to-be or you just want to smell freaking amazing, you definitely need to pick up White by Kenneth Cole, especially for how inexpensive this is. This is a neat. The next scent I recently talked about in my previous haul that I did, my most recent one, and I talked about how much I freaking love this scent. This is Floral Street Wonderland Peony. Basically, this scent reminds me so much of MAC Candy Yum Yum. So if you have either, I think that that would be a perfect uh, scent to wear in the springtime. But this one I feel like is even prettier and it's almost like a little bit sweeter. MAC Candy Yum Yum, although it does dry down very sweet, eventually it, it ends up smelling like this. The opening is slightly more tart, whereas this one just always really gives off like a really sweet vibe. And the two both have cotton candy and guava in them. And I just, I'm a, in love with guava scents. I've come to realize guava just gives like this uber sweet, candy-like scent to any scent. I don't want to say it gives it a tropical vibe, but it gives it like that summertime, just just nice, like euphoric feeling. I don't know how to describe it, but this is so pretty. It's got florals in it, but it's mostly like a sweet floral scent, and it is just like the ultimate feminine scent. It smells so, 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 so feminine and so girly. This has top notes of guava, red berries, Sicilian lemon, middle notes of raspberry bloom, peony, and violet, and base notes of cotton candy, vanilla, resins, woody notes, cedar, and vetiver. So you get a lot of sweet notes, you get a little bit of florals, but still very sweet florals, and then you get that dry down with the mashup of the cotton candy and the vanilla and a lot of woody notes. Yeah, I love this. That's all I'm going to say. So you definitely need to get your hands on Floral Street Wonderland Peony. This is a must. The next scent is another celebrity perfume and I absolutely love this bottle. Like this bottle is just iconic. I mean, it freaking has a little booty. So this is KKW Body 2. This is such a beautiful packaging that I literally would just like set this out as like decor in my living room. This one is borderline like summer springtime scent. Like it really gives me summer vibes as well because this does have a coconut scent to it, but it's very, 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 very floral. And that is because all of the scents from KKW basically are floral, but this is a really, really nice floral. It's very sexy. It's very feminine, but it's still very like fresh and uplifting. This has top notes of coconut nectar, neroli, mandarin orange, and bergamot, middle notes of manoi oil, ylang ylang, orange blossom, jasmine, and base notes of coconut milk, musk, and ambrette. So you get coconut nectar in the opening, and then it dries down with that coconut milk note. So you pretty much almost get like a coconutty, it almost gives me like suntan lotion type vibes like it really gives me summer vibes so i would say that this is a scent that you're more going to want to wear like springtime transitioning into summertime if you are going on any sort of vacation and you just want to smell so sexy but fresh and pretty all at the same time and just not weighed down by your scent 
this is going to be it. This is a really gorgeous one and that's coming out of somebody that really doesn't like heavy florals. And although I can definitely smell florals in here, it's like, it's a really good floral. This is very similar to scents like uh, Soleil Blanc from Tom Ford as well as Beach Walk by Replica. So if you're into those types of scents, you would really, really love this. Also, if you love Alien Goddess by Thierry Mugler, this also gives me that same vibe. So just to kind of like put it into perspective, this is in the family of all of those perfumes. So odds are if you like those, you will most likely like this. So that is KKW Body 2. This next scent I fell in love with pretty much as soon as I opened this bottle because as soon as I smelled it, it reminded me of my childhood. So this little perfume is in this little apple bottle and it's really cute. It's a little one fluid ounce, but I definitely need to get my hands on the big bottle. This is Nina by Nina Ritchie. I grew up with scents that smell like this. If you guys watched the BU perfumes that I reviewed, where I was talking about those scents where I basically grew up with those scents and we used to buy them with my cousins in Greece like all the time. When I smelled this perfume, that's exactly what it reminded me of. Like it just brought me back to my childhood. Oh, I can't get over it. And it's so strong and it just lasts and it projects like crazy. This scent is so sexy to me and it's so unique. It's unlike any perfume that I have, and I have hundreds of perfumes, as you guys know. This perfume has top notes of Amalfi Lemon and Lime, middle notes of Granny Smith Apple, Praline, Peony, Datura, and base notes of Apple Tree, Musk, and Virginia Cedar. I don't even know how to even go about explaining this or how to categorize this perfume. I really just cannot put it into a category. Like, I really don't know. <laughs> like, it starts off very citrusy and kind of bright and a tiny bit sour because of all those citrus that are in the opening. But then it does sweeten out. I mean, you get praline in here, you get a hint of floral, and then it does kind of dry down to like a woody musky scent in like the best way possible. Still kind of keeps that citrus vibe. It smells like a sweet candy apple, but mixed with lemon all at the same time. It smells so like so crisp and so womanly like it smells like a woman this is nina by nina rich next perfume you might recognize from my husband rates my perfumes video if you watched that this right here is bulgari omnia coral so this perfume kind of goes in the same family of chanel chance au tendre because it also has that really fresh kind of citrusy, feminine vibe. This is a very, 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 very fresh scent. I would say fruity fresh, because this has a lot of really, really beautiful fruits in it. So this has top notes of bergamot and goji berries, middle notes of pomegranate, hibiscus, water lily, and base notes of musk and Virginia cedar. As you guys can kind of see with a lot of these perfumes, they all kind of dry down to like a musky, woody base. And I just find myself really loving perfumes that dry down to that type of scent. I just think it's so beautiful and it gives them all like a really sexy more elevated sort of scent if you saw my husband rates my perfumes video you know he gave this like a 10 out of 10 and he was like raving about it he loved the way that this smelled and i've told you guys this before but this is like one of my most complimented scents in fact the first freaking day that i bought this and i sprayed it out i was at the drive through at mcdonald's and she pulls down the window and the very first thing that she said to me was, wow, you smell so good. And I was like, okay, this is definitely a crowd pleaser because ever since that day, every time I wear this, I get a compliment. People just love when people smell like they're clean. You know what I mean? So if you wear a scent like this, you're going to get a compliment. But this also has really, really beautiful, like dense fruits in it. Like that pomegranate just gives this like kind of a sweeter feel. So it's not like, super super boring type of fresh it's a really nice one especially for the springtime for the summertime in the warmer weather this just shines like no other so that is bulgari omnia coral we have made it to the very last perfume that i have to show in this video so this is couture couture by juicy couture this is probably the most expensive smelling uh, juicy couture fragrance this is a juicy scent that doesn't smell like the typical juicy scent. That smell more so like on the juvenile side, you know, they're not the most 
boss like mature perfumes out there this one is though this smells like money i included this in my cheapies that smell really expensive video and i got a lot of people telling me that you bought this because of me and you absolutely love it or you already had this and people always compliment you on it this gives me vibes of the original uh not viva la juicy just the original juicy couture scent and i would say that one is also not the most immature scent either like that one also gives me bougie expensive feminine vibes but it's almost better this definitely smells like something that burberry would come out with like it almost kind of reminds me of like a tamer version of burberry london it just gives me like like sophistication classy every time i've worn this my husband has complimented me on it like every time without a doubt he loves this stuff this has top notes of african orange flower mandarin orange and grapefruit middle notes of plum jasmine and honeysuckle with base notes of amber vanilla and sandalwood this is a white floral scent but with a lot of sweetness and depth to it and I think it's a perfect, perfect springtime scent because there is so much of that floral scent in here, but it's equally like balanced out by those sweet notes to where it's not like florals threw up on you and it's like super, super floral. I enjoy this so, so much. If you want to just smell feminine and rich, this is the scent to go for. And you can find this for like literally $15. It's very inexpensive. So that is Couture Couture by Juicy Couture. Right. That is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed all of these perfumes that I have lined up for this springtime. Let me know if you have any of these perfumes, if you enjoy them, and please let me know your top pick for the springtime. But that is it for me today. Please subscribe to my channel and turn your post notifications on and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.